Hello my Jason and welcome to my manga review for volume 7 of Sosei no Omyoji. This volume carries chapters 22 to 25 and we last left off in volume 6 we had Sayo uh, carrying out this divination ceremony with the reveal that uh, Rokuro's inner guardian is Abe no Seimei, the uh, son of Kuzunoa, uh, Sayo's inner guardian. And we have more um, context and more um, exposition onto what Sayo's I guess, role uh, in the exorcist world Role is you know she is the um yeah the the bearer of Kuzunoa but also carries forty other spirits who uh, serve as Kuzunoa's retainers and so they all um the, I guess the more retainers that come out the more potential that actresses has and all forty eight of these um retainers come out at once meaning that Roku has very high. Uh, potential as an actress, and you know, Sagan tries to get answers out of uh, Sayo. She isn't really sure whether that's actually Seimei or not. You know, more teases and more um, a foreshadowing to what's to come. You know, way later on, they don't really address this until way later on in the manga. But still, uh, she does say that Rokuro does have the potential and the hidden power to bring hope to all actresses uh, out there. And then we have this fun uh, little scene where Rokuro wakes up with Sayo in his bed with him and a nice little quip from Sayo uh, telling Benyo that she's more of a mother-in-law than a wife. And it's a very funny scene uh, there, but Sayo does deem Rokuro worthy of going to Tsuchimi Kaido Island and you know, he uh, instills confidence within Benyo. She has already the high confidence within herself as well, saying that you know, she is uh, very confident that she would also join Rokuro to Tsuchimi Kaido Island. Mayura is listening on the back She's crying because she has not met her goals. A bit of a hokey sort of scene. Wasn't really a big fan of that moment there. You know, just more of crybaby Mayura, but still leading into further development to your character later on, especially in Volume 8. Uh, when we get to there, that's bigger developments for a character, but still just more of the um, beginnings of that there. Wasn't a big fan of the beginnings, but still as they progress later on, it's very well worth it. Uh, but still, uh, Mayura, she uh, cries uh, because she has not met her goals, but uh, Ryogo cries as well, happy for Rokuro to realize his goals as an exorcist. You know, uh, from um, the flashbacks that we've seen from Ryogo to care of Rokuro as a kid, we're seeing all that comes to fruition here, where Ryogo is seeing Rokuro grow up uh, before his very eyes. And then these next few beats uh, follow the anime uh, that they uh, sort of adapted into a much different context. But we have Mayura and uh, Shimon, they uh, sort of clash at each other. Shimon's very pissed off at Mayura's lack of self confidence. Uh, within herself and tells uh, Mayura, this is the difference uh, from the anime, he tells um, Mayura um, sort of the background of Sayo and how she uh, is not a big fan of her predicament uh, that she's in, you know, being Kuzunoa's uh, retainer. She isn't really a big fan of that. It's a very um, dark scene uh, where she's sort of rubbing off the uh, markings on her. It's like to the point where she's bleeding, ripping off her own skin and, you know, she just wants to live a normal life and, you know, she um, wants to just be a normal person at least because her lifespan is only like four or five more years. She probably won't live until she's over 20 and so it's a very um, tragic uh, life that Sayo lives and he served, and she was using that against Mayura, you know, saying that, you know, you have, um, you gain more confidence in yourself and you know, they sort of bicker uh, here and there. It's very similar to the anime except without all the Sayo uh, sort of stuff as well. There's another similar scene to the anime, I think for sure this was in the anime, uh, was when Benio uh, was sort of um, back and forth going to school. She was in her PJs at first, then she was in her exorcist uh, outfits, and so you know, look very uh, funny scene there where Benio is very stressed out over the divination ceremony, whether she'll actually pass or not. And we have another uh, anime uh, scene that was adapted for, um, from the manga uh, where Mayura is, has these injuries, uh, very serious injuries, very noticeable injuries, uh, going to school. It's very obvious that she's training with Shimon uh, in a very um, hardcore sort of way. And getting more context with Sayo and her character, we have uh, her eating ramen of Rokuro. She's disappointed that she isn't, uh, she hasn't been able to visit all the places that she wanted to on the uh, other island here uh, because you know, she eventually likes to go home and you'll know, really uh, live her conservative lifestyle. And you know, Rokuro uh, tells her that you know, I will make sure to destroy all the impurities in the world to make sure you can live a happy life. And we have a very, um, you know, a big line that sort of foreshadowed a little bit of I hope, I hope I get to live a long life. And um, we have another flashback scene uh, later on where uh, Sayo's looking back onto her Shimon made a similar promise to Sayo where he will destroy all impurities in the world to make sure she can 
can live a happy life. And then we have uh, a scene where the escorts uh, for Sayo aren't too happy uh, to be there because um, they have a very uh, disloyal nature to themselves, as Shibon does say, but their skills are very uh, uh, high uh, according to you know, their uh, hierarchy within the island, and so that's why they're entrusted to protect Sayo. However, they're not really happy uh, doing that. It's very evident when they run up against uh, Basara and Hijirimaru, and Hijirimaru uh, has brutally killed all of them, and some of you try to run away, saying that, you know, I was, only, I was only part of this because I was born on the island, and so they try to create a tragic backstory there in a very short amount of time, and it wasn't really that effective. The, the escorts kind of deserved their death since they wanted to uh, ban uh, sort of um, ab abandon uh, Sayo uh, away from the Basara, and so before Heiji and Maru can attack Sayo, Shimon comes in for the rescue, and they have a very badass battle, very explosive battle between the two of them, and we get some more exposition as to the Basara, and how there are 11 Basara total, and you know, they don't really go into this uh, here, but later on they do, but i just um, spoil that uh, now. Uh, it's very different to the anime, where the animes are introduced Basara here and there, uh, but the uh, manga uh, establishes that there are 11 Basara only, and they are ranked, uh, I guess, by the exorcist because uh, Hijiri Maru doesn't really accept the ranking that he's been given. He's been in the fourth uh, ranking about all the Basara, and each ranking represents um, the the birth order and their level of strength. And so, 1 through 11, so 1 meaning that's the first uh, Basara born, and that's the strongest Basara. So, Hijiri Maru, by this context, he is the fourth Basara ever born, and he's the fourth strongest Basara. And so, from 1 to 11, the 11th, uh, interestingly enough, they address this later on in the story, but I'll just reveal it now. Uh, the eleventh is Kamui, and so Kamui is the youngest ex uh, Basara, and that means he is the weakest out of the eleven. So they are in for a tough battle with Hijiri Maru, uh, the fourth out of eleventh rank Basara, and then later on they uh, go up against Higano, who sort of steps in in the battle between Shimon and Hijiri Maru. He is the ninth rank Basara, and so a very tough battle to come for the Exorcist and Shimon and the Twin Stars. And so we sort of have this scene where the uh, Basara, especially Hijiri Maru uh, establishes his dominance over uh, Shimon, a heavenly commander, and so Hijiri Maru establishes himself, himself as a very strong antagonist for our exorcist and Renya Rokuro to come in for the save, but not uh, enough as Sayo is captured and taken away by the two Basara. After this uh, event happens, uh, Shimon is less frustrated, however, he uh, stresses that the twin star safety is more important than Sayo's life, and that's sort of orders he's given from Arima. Obviously, as a brother to Sayo, he is not happy with the situation. Seigen, he sort of just lets them do whatever they want as uh, Rokuro uh, and his ideals uh, win over Shimon uh, at the end, and they agree to work together. Yo, Shimon uh, asks Rokuro to lend him his strength, and so Benio uh, and Mayura is brought along as well. Seigen gives Mayura a charm uh, to make to sort of uh, protection uh, for her, and she decides for herself whether she wants to join in on the battle or not. She does join in. They all rush in there before Sayo can be killed by Hijiri Maru uh, to sort of steal uh, her enchanted powers, and so big battle will come between our hero exorcist against the Basra. Big battle to come. Big moments are to come uh, for all of our characters, and it, it, it does present a changing point within the whole series itself and really changes the story and the context of our characters. And so very exciting stuff to come, but for rating for this volume, for volume 7, give us one a B uh, rating because of the uh, minor scenes that weren't really that effective, uh, including the escorts. You know, you kind of want to make them sympathetic figures because they were born on the island. However, they were not successful in doing so. Some hokey lines here and there, some hokey um, character tropes where Mayura is crying in the background, just frustrated. I herself was a big fan of all of that. Uh, Hijiri Maru uh, and Higano are pretty despicable villains as they are established, and sometimes they go a little bit too far in their lines against Shima trying to toy with them, so a little bit too far for my liking there. And so, what are your thoughts on Volume 7 of Sosei no Onioji? Pour your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, make sure to rate this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell button to make sure you're notified when I post videos on this channel. Thank you for watching my manga review for Sosei no Omioji Volume 7. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.